going to do? What are the what are the what are the barber shop? People? What are the people who deal predominantly in cash going to do when this happens? I never knew there would be cell phones and you can swipe my barber and once he cuts your hair, you can get up, give him your debit or credit card, and he swipe the phone like we do here in the ministry. Mm -hmm. I was resistant for years of getting technology where we can swipe credit cards in the service because I was resisting it. Let me ask you a question. You know the scripture. Some of you heard me, been with me since I moved here day one, June 93. Heard me talking from the time y'all met me about there was coming a chip. Let's be honest, a quick survey, and I don't put anybody on the spot, but I just want you to be honest before the right will judge you. Even on what the scripture says, even some of you have been be 23, 24 years, whatever, heard me preach and teach you, you've seen some of the stuff we've shown, you've seen the technology advancing. How many of you still believe that it's a little far-fetched that they would take a chip and put it in your hand so that not only can you open your doors and start your own cars, but that you can make purchases with a chip and your doctor records and everything all be inside of your hand. How many still like doubt that, that that's really the truth? Be honest. Be honest. Even though you say, how many of y'all doubt that they, they, they have technology like that? Anybody doubt it? Be honest. Put my glasses on because y'all are blurry. Does anybody doubt that you that, 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 that exists today, that they're doing it today? Oh, y'all are a well-learned crowd. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all believe that it's here and people are making purchases with the chip in their hand? Let me see your hands. Okay, good chance now. Good. All right, let me show you something. Let's put that on the screen real quick. We're going to teach you a little word today. Let me just put this on the screen fast. If you put it on the screen. Um, maybe not. Let me see. Let me see if we need the lights. One second, Kevin. Like, when I start talking, that'd be the intro. <laughs> like that should have been done to me. Alright, thank you, son. Appreciate it. It'll be extra bonus in the check. Appreciate it. Alright, turn up the volume unless it's, I don't I don't know how loud it is in there, guys. I ain't sure about it, but just pay close attention to it. Yeah, if you can't see, it's only three minutes. People you can see this young fellas. Because I'm really concerned about the generation coming. Okay? Watch this. I can't believe you came with this hand. Like you just literally put your hand up and you're good to go. Like that's crazy. My name is Charlie Rizal. I'm a senior writer with BuzzFeed News. And uh, in order to see what the future of money looks like, I decided to live for a month. I just pay for things with my phone. And somewhere along the line, I ended up getting a microchip. It was a microchip. person in the world to uh, pay for something out of the real world using uh, just their hand. I basically wanted to try to uh, download as many apps on my phone as possible and make sure that uh, I could use alternative currencies and uh, try to secure apps or credit cards in any way possible. You know, using your phone as a payment method, we call that a proximity mobile payment. And we estimate that by the end of 2016, U.S. adults will spend $27 billion using their phone at the point of sale. Oh, wow. If you look at that in the context of the card volumes, I mean, that's a pretty small drop in the bucket. Do you guys, uh, do you guys have Apple Pay or any of the card reader things? For your phone. Yeah, I am using it right now. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. When you're only using your phone to pay for things, you find that you're sort of pushed to two extremes: really big chain stores or really small niche kind of overpriced coffee shops and places like that. A couple weeks into my experiment, uh, I ended up going to Sweden. Sweden happens to be way far ahead of the United States when it comes to uh, getting rid of cash. I ended up uh, meeting with some people who are really active in the biohacking community and found that you could actually implant an RFID NFC chip in your hand. So can you get rid of me? I don't think so. And so I figured if I could put it in my hand, maybe I'd be able to pay for something with my hand. Now what hand are they putting in with him? It's left. It's left. It's left. It's like the opposite of the right hand. So the experiment is to not come down with him. It's not crazy. It's like a pill. I think the idea of using a microchip implant in one's hand to be able to make a mainstream application, but I really think there might be other ways where that might come to fruition, not necessarily through like surgical implant, but uh, you know, through other kind of integrations with the public. So once everything healed, I decided that I needed to start focusing on how to make this chip work. And I really wanted to be 
become the first person to ever pay for a meal at a restaurant with their hand. Eventually, I stumbled across a Venmo engineer who uh, said that he could help me uh, with my task. What they decided is that they would put my Venmo uh, unique user ID onto my chip, which would basically make it so that any phone would recognize my hand as a Venmo app. <laughs> you're saying your secret joke in Venmo, and you're going to go up there, and they're going to scan your hand for how much we owe. That's it. The wallet is oh, good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's that's good. Turn the light on. That's good. I just want you to see that. You can talk about it, but you can see where they're actually now swiping hands with chips, conducting business business in the marketplace. I told you before my concern is that I saw this in the spirit before I even read this in the Bible 26 years ago. How far is the technology away? And the reason being is you have preachers, as I forewarned you, pastors, you can now pastors in the country now, coming forth as I told you they would, and tell the congregation, this isn't the mark of the bees, don't worry about it. And they're conditioning the minds and the people to believe that this is acceptable. And so we really don't have to do our due diligence to pray and study because the scripture says, in Revelations 14, 9 and 10, if any man take that mark or worship that image, that he brings damnation upon himself. So we need to be very careful and we need to hear from the Holy Ghost. Because pretty soon, credit cards, dental records, medical records, social security, passports, you see the chip in the passport. Now, you're going to the stores now and they're moving from swipes to chip now chip in the passports and while we sit there we go yeah 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 but we, we don't realize it's the frog in warm water under the fire that's slowly heating him up till he starts to boil yeah. and so what do we do about it God? we pray because you have a remnant no you have the majority in the so called church world teaching of a rapture that before we go into tribulation the church is going to be raptured and if that were the case Half the folks who think they're going to be raptured won't be raptured because they ain't living nothing. Oh, not so that works, Everybody talking about rapture, people sitting there sliding, chucking and jiving, sleeping around, playing around, looking for excuses, cussing, walking, stealing, everything you can imagine. And their affection is not several things which are above. But the Bible talks about us going through some tribulation yeah. and some persecution. Yeah. That's right. And so we're going to have to embrace that and embrace ourselves so that we are well aware of the times and what we're to do about it. And we're going to need the Holy Ghost's help. Amen? Yeah. We're going to need Him to lead and guide us. And so hit somebody real fast. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm, I'm tired, tired of making mistakes. So we got to let Him lead us. Okay? So that being said, let's pray about it. Let's go to the Word of the Lord. i got 30 minutes to teach you on something. The Lord say the same thing in Russian. But we had a wonderful time on Wednesday night. I don't know who was here. Amen. Amen. God's use of time. Yeah. That CD, there's a bunch of copies made. Sammy or Niles will help you in the foyer after service. God's use of time. We welcome in those watching by way of internet. Those of the family that are keeping the minion and running live set up. King's worship. I'm not going to die in cruise control. I'm, I'm inconvenient. <laughs> Because I know there's wheat and tares in here, and I need to find out where my folk are. You down with the devil, stay seated quiet, don't like that. Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew chapter 7. Please listen to me. 
I've been ministering the last two Sundays. This is the third and then we'll do the fourth before I'll say the same next week. Uh, a series entitled The A-List. The A-List. Say that when you say the A-List. The A-List. Now, B, not C. A-List means, you know, uh, I'm among the upper echelon. And the A-List, two weeks ago, we talked about acceleration. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Well, that was last Sunday, was it not? Two Sundays ago, we talked about advance. Yes. The Lord told him in Deuteronomy 1 6, He said, You've been on this mountain too long, it's time to advance. Yes. Last week, we told you that things are about to accelerate, not accelerate. Some of y'all got the demonics, I appreciate you. But it's accelerate. ACC, that means you can put your foot on the pedal and move things fast. So God told us to advance, He told us He's about to accelerate some things in our lives. And today, the A list continues. The Lord says, uh, authority. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, it. Hey, uh, yeah, yes, come sir. On. It says, I need you to walk in authority. In authority. Yeah. Now, please notice not arrogance, yeah. not apathy. Yeah. Arrogance, stuck up. Apathy, lean back, chilling. But authority. Uh-huh. Authority. So, first of all, we need to see the premise by which. He has established that for right he could delegate authority, you have to first have it yourself. Uh, my boy, no. No. Give no. honor to my mother and my grandmother in absence. Each of you, my father's children, all my elders and pastors, each of you be rich in Jesus' name. Matthew 7, verse 28, if you haven't said amen. 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 Yeah, Matthew chapter 7. Verse 28. Now I'm not going between King James and Living, New Living Translation. And I'm not sure uh, what we got on the screen there. That's New Living? That's fine. We'll work with it. Uh, somebody shout authority. Authority. Come on. Now look at somebody else say, walk in authority. Walk in authority. And power. And power. Now watch now. Watch now. Watch. Let's establish Jesus has it first. Matthew 7, 28, 29 says, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings. The people were astonished at his doctrine. Verse 29. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Go to Mark chapter 1 verse 22. They couldn't believe that he didn't teach as the scribes, but he taught as one having authority. The people understood and they distinguish one from who knew the law versus one who knew the lawgiver. They were able to feel a difference and to see a different demeanor and had a deeper impact in the hearers than when the scribes shared the same law. I told you some years ago, I can faintly remember a story of... um, there was a, a competition at a school or something, and there was an orator, one who spoke well and had a proper posture, and he was known for speeches and poems. And then there was a preacher. There was a talent show, as it were. There were singers and all kinds of things. But there came a portion of the, of the, of the talent show where they wanted to have the 23rd Psalm quoted. Memorized. And the order came up, and he was very elegant, eloquent in his demeanor, in his approach, in his lingo. And he stood up and said, The Lord is my shepherd, perfect posture. And he spit out verbatim the 23rd Psalm, didn't make an error, and it was perfect pitch, and the people were in awe. They said, Wow. Next they asked, He said, We have such and such pastor. From a little bitty small church around the corner, and this little dark suit man, suit looked a little dingy, but he walked up to the podium, and his posture was a little hunched over, and he had some wrinkles in his face, and his hands were a little arthritic, and he stood as straight as he could and looked everybody in the eye, and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. And he stumbled through it and quoted the 23rd Psalm, and the people was silent. They began to look at one another and they said, the orator 
sounded like he knew the 23rd Psalm. But the preacher sounded like he knew the shepherd that the song was referring to. I'm going to lie to you know. You can know the Bible, but do you know its author? Come on. The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. The, 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 the rima is what we want. The logos is, is, is Greek for the written word. Uh huh. But the rima is the revelation. The revelation. Yeah, you can yeah. never study to know Yahweh Elohim. That's right. God that created all things. Uh, you 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 can study. The Bible says in Timothy two fifteen to show yourself approved unto God. Uh-huh. To rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. But you'll never study to know God. That's right. That's right. Because God is only known. Through whom he chooses to reveal himself. That's right. That's right. Matthew 16. Who do men, let me, let me just put my own twist, who do theologians and seminaries and scholars say that I, the Son of Man, am? His disciples said, Some say Elias and John the Baptist, risen from the dead, and Jeremiah. Yeah, 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 but now here's the issue. Who do you say that I am? Wow. 11 men silent. But one man, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Well, have you said this sign in Mark Jonah? But he noticed what he said. He said, Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. Right. I wish y'all would help me. Strong skin coordinates did, did, didn't help you come to this conclusion. That's right. That's right. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Uh, schooling, it, it didn't help. But see, he said, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you, but it was my father. That's right. Paul said in Galatians chapter 1, 15, 16, 17, 18 verse, he says, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb. Right. And call me by his name to reveal his son in me. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. That's right. That's right. Three years I was in the desert. And afterwards, 15 days I went and then sat out with Peter. But immediately God revealed his son yeah. in me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Tell your neighbor, say, God has to uncover it for you. God has to uncover it for you. Unto the saints, it's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I was right. That's right. Uh, the Bible says that the, 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 the kingdom of God is not, is not, is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Paul said, when I came unto you, I didn't come unto you with wise words. Enticing words of men's wisdom. Well, how did you come, Paul? I came in demonstration of the power and the Holy Ghost. Come on. We got to see power today. We got to see it manifest like never before. But there's some reasons why we're not seeing the manifestation of power on a daily basis. Isn't it a disservice to Jesus who said, The works that I do, greater works shall you do because I go to the Father? You know, what happens is, the number one thing, and I'm trying to hit myself, is that we have the law of familiarity kicking in. That's wow. right. Yeah, he couldn't do many miracles in his own town because of their unbelief. What caused them to unbelieve? Well, he did a few, he healed a few sick folk, but he couldn't manifest the wholeness of his deity by the way of the supernatural side that was housed by his natural makeup. He was all God by the grace of God and had the power to walk on water, but he couldn't do it around his own folk. Because a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. That's right. But he could not move in in the vastness of the totalitarianism of his makeup because people said, that's Joseph's boy, that's Mary's son. I play with his brothers and we hang out. Isn't he just a carpenter? Wow. Now Jesus could have got frustrated, but he understood if y'all don't receive me, you don't receive him that sent me. I'm cool with wiping the dust off of my feet. So when you are anointed of God, like many of y'all claim you are, and some of you are that are watching, you have to carry yourself in a way that breeds isolation and loneliness because you have to guard your assignments. Into this word. You, you, can't, you can't be playing and giggling with folk and then want to prophesy to them. You, you can't be at the stage party smoking and drinking Hennessy and laughing with your kids folk and then come tell them, pray for fruits worthy of repentance, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The 
chimney for an hour in his leg because see what will happen is the enemy will tell him that, that they only prophesy and it ain't prophecy they're just saying what they see yeah. Yeah. prophecy contrary to popular belief according to the apostle Paul to the Corinthian church is not necessarily for the believer Come on. No. He said, when you start speaking in tongues, he said, he said, listen, he said, you speak in tongues in public worship, if you don't have an interpreter, then don't do it. He said, because if there's somebody that comes in unbelieving, huh? and you're speaking in an unknown language, it don't edify nobody. He that speaking in an unknown tongue edified himself. He said, but I'd rather speak five words with understanding, y'all, they help me here. He said, but come and rather that you may prophesy, because when an unbeliever comes in the house and you speak in an unknown language, they'll think you're crazy. But if you prophesy to them, they'll know that God is in you the truth. But in order to be able to prophesy somebody and to have a word of knowledge to know something from God that you don't know in the natural about somebody, you have to be away from them people. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why I don't sit up in council. I know, I know, I'm not, I told you I'm not a pastor. I have elders and stuff that do that. But I'm an apostle. I can't sit up in council for all day during the week. Because then when I get up to preach, the enemy will have you wondering, is that God or is that our counseling session? Come on, wow. But if you ain't talked to me all week and you ain't been talking about your business, you've been talking to the Lord. Then when you come to service, you can put your napkin around your neck because it's time to eat. Because my father is getting ready to speak to my father to give me some instruction to answer that prayer and give me some direction. Hallelujah! It's better than y'all react to the Go ahead! Take authority. Authority! I'll show you he had it, he gave it to us. And I'm going to show you how to operate in it because the enemy wants to strip you yeah. of your authority. So he can wreak havoc on you and have your teenager telling you what he ain't going to do, cussing you out. You'll be amazed how many people I talk to whose teenagers are putting their hands on their mothers. I'm from, I'm from another time and age. I didn't even need the Holy Ghost to have authority. But I come from a whole other time. I, I, I come from a whole other time where, where women that didn't even have the Holy Ghost didn't tolerate that. But there are some demons loose in the earth now that don't care nothing about government. They don't care nothing about police officers. They don't care nothing about you. And that's why the enemy has police officers killing kids in the street. Because he wants rebellion. And he wants chaos. And he wants order out of chaos. But he don't want the order of the Holy Ghost. He wants the order according to Isaiah 29, 15. They hide things by doing it upside down. So he wants to create chaos so he can bring in wrong and redefine wrong as right. Oh God, can y'all help me in this place? He wants a man to look in the mirror and see a woman and then lie to the man and have the man lie to you and then force you to believe a lie instead of the truth because he got a reprobated mind and strong delusion that he can believe a lie instead of the truth and a man look at him himself in the mirror who was made in the image and likeness of God and say, I'm actually a woman on the inside. That's crazy. That's crazy. Jesus. So he wants order, his order, which is disorder out of chaos. We don't have judges, we don't have rulers no more. We don't have men and women that stand as pillars, that stand their place and remind the saints, amen, and lift up their voice like a trumpet and cry out against sin. Show the house of Jacob their transgression. Show the nation of Israel their sin. People that'll say, listen, judgment shall first begin in the house of the Lord and cry out and say, saints, listen, it's high time to get our houses in order, to get that on our face and get on our knees because contrary to popular belief, we are the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth and we got to be a city set on a hill which cannot be hid. Y'all are not helping me preach in here. Fall on heaven, but you don't want to go through hell on earth to get there. But the Bible said, through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. That's right. That's right. It's going to cost you something. To maintain an authority that's been given to you. All right. I wish I could teach you. Let me lay this foundation for you. 
in Mark chapter 1 verse 22. I got to hurry because I'm, I'm, I'm taking too much time. King James says, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, not as scribes. Y'all ain't got mean you have authority. That's right, Titles don't mean you have authority. That's right. Holding the Bible up and being a Bible follower don't mean you have authority. Right. Speaking in a tongue that you conjure up, come and come and come and come and see me. Lie. I know they say, come, come, come. No, speaking in a tongue and conjuring up religion is because you look the part. Long robes, long black dresses, your hair all the way down to the back of your behind. You, you got on big collars and, and huge crosses and rings and you're priest and reverend and you, you got power to yell and scream and roll on the floor. You can dance. You can prophesy because you say thus saith the Lord that thou walketh in the land. And then you don't talk like that. Neither does he. Don't be saying nothing. But what I want you to understand is this. That doesn't mean you have authority. You don't have authority until a demon say, Paul, I know. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, I know. But who are you? Sons of Seth trying to cast out devils, and they said, We insure you by Paul's God. Oh my God. <laughs> you young folk, including my children, the day of your riding in, being sanctified because of the believing parent is over. Sanctified means to be set apart. Yeah. What happens is you're set apart to be filled with the Holy Ghost, yeah. so you can have God's authority in the earth. But we didn't ride no mama and grandmama them and being blessed because we live in a house with the hell of the house. Fears the Lord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. But there are demons that are coming on the scene now that are designed by God to be unleashed to drive you into the presence of the Lord. That's right. Oh my God. He's going to give America what she wants. You want Jezebel? You're going to get it. You got it. It's amazing. You women want to be equal again. You want equal job rights. You want to play football. Man. You want to do everything a man do. You want to be like a man, right? You want equal rights, right? You want to be in the America, in, in, in the Marines, right? You want to be in the Army, right? Five years ago, don't ask, don't tell. How can they say it? Listen, I can be homosexual and be in the Marines. Don't ask my sexual preference. Five years removed from it, you got the first guy I showed you a couple weeks ago standing in Congress as one of the highest army officials, what's the first thing comes out of his mouth? I'm a homosexual. Five years ago, you didn't want us to ask or you didn't want to tell. But now you're flaunting it in our face. Y'all are not saying nothing wrong. Because now we ain't hiding nothing no more. We're coming out. It don't make no difference to us. Because we don't feel threatened by you and we know that our leader has a short time. And he's great. Oh, Y'all are not helping me. But there's going to be a people who know their God. Be strong and do everything Sports in this last and evil day. So people that are going to rise up with the fire of God that's going to cause things to come to a head. You're not going to be able to just hang around folk and they not get mad and go to cussing. That I'm only going to draw out impurities. That I'm going to show you in a minute. And some of y'all been wondering why you can leave prayer and leave a service like this and then walk into a room and everybody look like they mad with you. Upset with you and all of a sudden everywhere you go, people look like they just found in you, acting a fool at you. What is going on? That, that temperature is being turned up. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you women want equal rights. So what's going to happen is God's going to turn you over and give you somebody with a spirit. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Next president, man. You want equal rights. But why ain't y'all outraged at Bruce Jenner? Y'all want equal rights. But why ain't y'all outraged that men can go in the bathroom and sit in the stall while your daughters and you sit in there with a nasty, long-fingered, long-haired man with a hairy back, y'all, they helping me preach? They don't like this. I'm marked for death anyway. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There's a heavy call on our lives now. But the Bible said the righteous are as bold as a lion. I know that I have a cross to bear. And if I die for the truth, yeah. I'm going to reign yeah. with him forever. Yeah. Why don't you all raise and stand up? Y'all on equal rights to preach. You want men to recognize you, preach it. Men to recognize you in the Marines. Men to recognize you in every wall of society. Why haven't you got with some sisters, got with your daughters, and went to your congressmen or went and stood in some places? Hallelujah. 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 H
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Let's look at another scripture, please. We gotta finish. My time is almost up. All right, let's go to Matthew 28, 18. It says this word. Look at her. Let me ask. I shout authority. Authority. Sang with power. Say authority. Authority. Jesus came and told us, I need game. Not, not volume, but open the mic up. Jesus came and told his disciples, I, I have been given all authority in heaven and in earth. Colossians 2.15, New Living Translation says, In this, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities and shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. All right, we've seen out of the gay family that Jesus the Christ, can I, can I bore you on? Come on, come on. Yeah, that he has authority. That yes. He had it and he gave it up for a moment and he became death for us. He became a curse for us. He took the curse so that I think and thinking, I, I think and thinking would no longer remain. They put thorns on his head. They smashed his hands with railroad spikes. They opened up his side. They, they, they speared him in the side. They plucked his beard asunder. They whooped him 39 times across his back. And the Bible declares unto us, he said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Yeah. Right. So since God can't dwell in a sin cursed body while Jesus was on the cross, I'll let y'all go home. He stepped out of the body and watched that body die. The Bible said it pleased God to Bruce. That's right. The Bible said by one man's sin, Adam's sin came into the world. But by one man's obedience, Jesus Christ, dominion returned unto us. So we came out of Adam when, when they opened up Jesus' side with a spear, out came blood and water. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Right. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're clean through the washing of water by the word. Yeah. So what happens is, when he opened up Jesus' side, there came our cleansing so we can climb back in Jesus' yeah. side and be sealed up with the Bible say that our lives are hidden with God in Christ. Christ. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. In Christ Jesus. So he became a sacrifice. Well, what happened was, he became sin cursed for us. And God the Father watched the body die. Oh my God. Powerful. Yeah, but when they laid him in the tomb, a prophecy was awaiting. He said, You crucify me, you kill me. On the third day I'll rise again. No man take my life. I lay it down. If I lay it down, watch this. I got the power. Oh, we get ready to talk now. I got the power to raise it back up. Well, how can you declare that? Because I'm operating in the authority now. That I have the power that on the other side of me being crucified, I'm going to resurrect that body. When he resurrects that body three days later, he says something good in Matthew 28 18. He says, All authority yes. has been given. Yeah. Oh, I got to show y'all. Can y'all take a little bit more? All authority, watch this, in heaven and in the earth. It's been given unto me, restored unto me. Watch this. And I'm going to give it to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. For as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So we won't be like him. We won't be walking like him, talking like him, living like him. Y'all are still living like you crazy. But let me tell you something. Before you can have dominion over demons, dominion over the dark world, you have to get dominion over your own body. You've got to take authority over the thoughts of your mind. you got to take authority over the inner you, which is the real inner me. you got to make up and realize that I cannot sit here and preach to others and my soul become a castaway. Paul said, I beat my flesh until it's black and blue. Why? Lest I preach unto you and my soul become a castaway. So he gives us the power and the authority to tell ourselves, come under submission. Oh, Lord, if you help me, I'll get up this mountain. Come on, submission. What does the Bible say? It says, submit to God, submerge. Uh -huh. That's the word. That's good. Come under God's authority and resist the devil and he'll flee. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, show me this one. Those that have an ear to hear now. And, and it's so, because he made an open spectacle of the ear to hear, and he brought down, amen, all the authorities and spiritual rulers, Colossians 2.15, Ephesians 2.5, King 
he said. But God, who is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much. I'm finishing, bro. That even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you've been saved. Verse 6. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. Oh, look at this. And seated us with him in heavenly places because we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are united with Christ. You didn't catch that. He said, he seated us in heavenly places. Oh, you know that's powerful because he said what Christ did for us, what he did put us in the future. But what he said was, you don't have to wait for the future to manifest it now. Believe me, when Christ raised up from the grave, he raised up his predestinated children to be seated with him in heavenly places. That's a spiritual rule, a spiritual reign, a spiritual place. Not that you're going to inherit after you die, but we're seated with Christ then now. That's right. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Talk to me, somebody. So you have a power that is invested in you that you got to understand it so you don't abuse it, but so the enemy don't have you misuse it and ensnare you so that you fail the grace of God. Oh, my God. Somebody say power. Power. So have some help. Luke 9, 1 through 6, and I gotta walk this thing. Somebody shall he gave it to me. He gave it to me. Uh, look at Luke 9, Luke 9, Luke 9, Luke 9, verse number 1. One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power. Power. Uh-huh. And authority to cast out demons and to heal all disease. He sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God, to heal the sick. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food or money, or even a change of clothes. Verse 4, wheresoever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people uh, to their fate. Verse 6, so he began... There, so, so they began their circuit of villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. As you move to the next chapter, Jesus moves further. Luke 10 18, he said, How the hell Satan has lightning? Uh-huh. Yes. Fall from heaven. Yes. Verse 19, he said, Look, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah! I've given you power. Luke 10, son. Verse 19. Look, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes, snakes, and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will, will harm you. Right. Behold, I've given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Watch this thing over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall in any wise harm you. Who can right. that? Now, I'm not talking about snakes that you think about as out there in the woods. Jesus said, Oh, you generation of violence, snakes in the church, snakes in the marketplace, people who are subtle, who do you mean, people that are snake or the serpent seed, people who are the enemy, the tares that have come against the wheat, people that the enemy is sitting in to frustrate your plan, to frustrate your calling in your life, to cause you to not realize who you are, let me tell you something that happened to me yesterday. Jesus. In this study, I've been looking at, and you know I'm big on the seeds of Satan. And how the Bible said in John the 8th chapter, the Pharisees told Jesus, Abraham is our father, God is our father. In 844, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Which is interesting as to how you can argue with God in the flesh that he is your dad. Wow. And he has to turn around and tell them, no, this is who your father is. Which means Satan has children. Oh my God. Come on. Open it up. Be loud. Satan has children. Yeah. Are you following me? Yeah. He has children. I was doing this study and I was reaching out to the Lord yesterday. And I have, I have one of these iPads. And, and, and the screen is cracked. It's not that bad. But I didn't have anything to really do in that moment of time. I had a 
Remember, it was a little small window of just some, some time. And so I went right up here, right up here, hang on, right up here in the same area here. Now they can they fix computers. And we've been here seven years, and this gentleman I've given money to fix several computers, several iPads and phones that have cracked. I brought him business. We've been here for years. So I say years. Yeah. Well, for seven years, our van has been parked out there on the roadside where there's light because when we parked it in here, some years ago, it was stolen. So I spoke to the owner of the property. Come on. Come on. I spoke to the one that has authority over the property, yeah. authority over the grounds, who whatever they say it is, because they reign over the property. Wow. God will catch you later. And so I asked them, I said, is it permissible, since we pay rent and there's a hundred or so parking spaces, do you mind if I park by the road sign with this light so that I'll pay them? And so sure, no problem, one space isn't hindering anyone. That's Thank right. you. It's been there seven years. I haven't had any problems since. So when I go into the patronize the business to get my iPad screen fixed, I walk into the individual who's renting a space who has power in his space, but he's under an authority over the power. When I go into the store, I say, hi, how you doing? He greets me for about a second with a smile, and then his disposition changed. And then when my mind said, I'm going in as a patron to get an iPad glass fixed. But I, I almost forgot for a moment who I am in the spirit. Yeah. Oh. I got to help somebody. I'm going to get out of here. Don't get it twisted, because if you turn up your spirituality around the saints, and think you can turn it down when you get in society. I came to tell some of y'all something, that there's an anointing in our lives, in my presence out here, that now you ain't going to be able to just turn down the pressure. We're not Hallelujah! Y'all, you got to help me preach this all because yes, you want everybody to like you. But if they reject it, you're safe. They're going to reject you as well. If the world hated him, they're going to hate you as well. I love not the world, I'm neither the things that are in the world. He that loveth the world doesn't have the love of the Father in him. They're going to hate you and despise you. Speak all manner of evil to get you falsely. Ooh, ah, the seed of Satan that is on the rise in this end time. We're all going to do something distinctive about you. I'll not see you in the mall and wonder if you're going to make a video and back that thing up while you're twerking. I'm going to be able to look at a saint versus a sinner and understand and identify with who's in my family. Y'all ain't helping me preach it. But there's such a convergence and merger of all things that the enemy wants everything merging into one. So everybody loses their identity. I might lose some stuff, but I'm not going to lose my identity in Christ. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall do them no harm. Why? Because they have been identified as mine. Distinguishes. Jesus said that my sheep, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. You gotta be sober, be vigilant, for the adversary goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You can turn it off when you leave here. You turn cussing off when you come in church. You turn lying off when you come in church, some of you. You come in here and you turn up your spiritual light, but you're trying to turn it off when you're in the world. And I'm telling you, there's a time now where the Lord is saying, make a difference between the clean and the unclean. Leviticus 10 and 10. Behold, I come quickly. Revelation 21. He said, my reward is with me. If you're filthy, remain filthy. If you're holy, remain holy. No, they help me here. It's high time now for us to get in a place where the Lord and recognize who we are. What our assignment is. Where our assignment is. And we gotta grab it with both hands and tell the devil, if I perish, let me perish. Why are you so determined, Esther? Because I'm on my way to see the king. 
ascend into God's holy mountain with you that have clean hands and a pure heart. Tell your neighbor you got a harmony. Tell them you got power. Tell God your power. Just keep my game open because I don't, I don't want no fights now. Get your name to say authority is on you. Tell them it's in you. Don't want to put your hand over your badge. Don't walk around society and hide your badge. I don't hide it now because you can't hide it because the spirit realm recognize the spirit realm. And some stuff is getting ready to happen this week, says the spirit of God, that you will have to exercise your authority. You gotta hurry up and get over the Facebook generation. You want everybody celebrate you. You want everybody want your Jesus. You want everybody else summing up your poetry. Everybody else liking your scripture posts. Uh -uh. You have to burn up your mind and be resistant of the devil. You gotta understand you don't want to be free with the devil seen no way. But oh. your presence is getting ready to shake up some rules. Oh, no. oh, a police officer, you don't have to draw his gun. You don't have to reach for his taser. You don't have to reach, hallelujah, for his badge or nothing. All the police officer has to do is the invisible eye shot yeah. of somebody that's criminal minded. Yeah. To the rest of us that are law abiding citizens, we see a police officer in wave. But when you have ill intent and you see somebody in authority, it automatically makes you get nervous. Yeah. It automatically makes you want to run. You automatically go to sway. You know, they hear what I'm saying. But when demons are sitting in people, you come around.
Y'all know where that was? It was just high. Uh-huh. It was in three seconds. Okay. His whole car is shit. What's his name? Yes, No one in the store. Not a car in the parking lot. Wow. No business seats. On the computer. I'm going to be playing solitary or working on some shit. I walked in. Take my iPad and place it on the, on the counter. I said, how you doing? Call him by his first name. Seven year relationship. You didn't catch it. Yes, sir. Seven year relationship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And things were going a certain way, and I assumed that things were going to go the way that I assumed they were, but someone shifted. Jesus! Come on. I first part taking out a few right through now. I want y'all to understand something shifted. Yeah. Uh, come on. Come on. Yes. 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 And before I could cry, I get mad at what I'm about to tell you. The Lord said, don't worry about it. Don't even sweat it. I just want to show you what's on you. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. Hallelujah. My God. I handed him my iPad. Uh-huh. And normally, he'd say, Bishop, what can I do for you? What's wrong with it? Open up and say, I can uh, see if you got a crack when you replace it. Here's what I can have done. Here's what it'll cost. So I need Bishop. That's what I assume based on gas exchanges. Uh-huh. Yeah. I gotta tell somebody here, I hope you don't proceed after today with past relationships assuming what oh, was my God. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. We believe the folk that say, hey, how you doing? Come on in. Jesus. But this week, some folk gonna tell you, get out. Oh, 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 oh. I'm alright with it. You can't go into where God wants you to go if you're comfortable where you're at. And sometimes God got to stab some stuff to get you to the next level. You got to push you into the next level. You got to make somebody hate on you to drive you into somebody looking on you. Thank you. That means God's gonna give me double after the trouble. All he is is an announcer. 
when he comes on the scene, it must be I gotta go through a little bit because these great afflictions, which are but for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding eternal day of glory. When the enemy shall come in, you go ahead and start swimming, baby. It's like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord is going to lift the standard of men's hair. Open up your mouth and step out and make a move. It's amazing, other folk move. 
But please look at somebody and say, hold your peace. That's your badge. That's your training. That's going through your schooling. The university of trials and troubles. But you're working for us a far more exceeding return way of glory. Uh, let, 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 let tribulation have her perfect work, but she may be perfect in time, wanting nothing. Right, right. Tribulation working, patience, woman, so patience, experience, and experience, hope, hope, hope. Uh-huh. hope that they have not ashamed, for the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's right, that's right. Uh, 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 many are the afflictions of them. Right here. But the Lord shall deliver them out of them. Oh, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with, with me. me. Oh, you didn't say that like you knew it. You say that like the order. Say that like you said, thou art with me. Thou art with me. Thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff comfort me. me. Thou prepares the table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with all as a goodness and mercy shall follow me. Thy rod and thy staff, they do what? Fight and lead and God not ah, lead. Hallelujah! Oh my God. God! I don't know who I'm talking to. Come on. The Lord told me to tell you you done been through school to where you got the uniform, the badge. And, 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 and it's a legal badge to where the number on the badge is registered. Yeah. Oh And also, his Azusia is his badge. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because the badge says, not only do I have the right to exercise the law to protect and serve, but what the badge says is, I'm a part of a system. Uh-huh. Of assigned authority. Yeah. Yeah. So to go past me, you got to deal with who backs me. Woo! I'm not shy about it. See, I found out now, now 
games. You pull out your clock with 18 rounds and 15 rounds. But there's some boys out here got 32 rounds on average. Yeah. There's some boys with the officers over his gun. They say, you ain't saying nothing, dog. You ain't saying nothing, dog. Yeah. And if they got more guns than one officer, then they don't fear an officer with a gun. But why don't they run from one officer? It ain't just his authority. It ain't, it ain't just the dude that's all the gun. It's something else. Remember when they got ready to crucify Jesus? And Pilate, wife, started saying, Pilate's wife started saying, listen, she said, listen, I suffer many things with this yeah, man. Yeah. You have nothing to do with this innocent man. Yeah. Leave him alone. Come on, don't I hear me preach? That man came out and Pilate said to Jesus, he said, listen, he said, tell me who you are. He said, listen, tell me because know you not that I have the Azusia. Know you not that I have the Dunamis. Know you not that I have the authority and the power to deliver you up or to release you. I'm that dude. I got power over your life. I got authority over you. But I can be crucified and released. Tell me what I want to know. Jesus had been quiet the whole time. But the problem was, in the Ten Commandments, he said, thou shalt not bear false witness. To bear false witness isn't a lie said, but rather when you agree with a lie someone else says. So a lie is I tell you a lie. But if you lie and I bear witness that the lie is true from your mouth, I'm going messing the commandments up. So Jesus had been quiet. But I didn't know he ain't going to break the commandments. So he said, I have the power over you. Jesus broke silence and said, listen, know you not that I can call 12 legions of angels. I can call them down right now. In other words, you got some of all me, but you better fear the fact that I can call for backup. One and a half of you, one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. You know what the officer's greatest power is? That walkie talking. Because if we can call for backup, they don't know where it's coming from. They don't know how soon it's going to get there. Is it coming in the air? Is it coming in the ground? Is it coming around the corner? Oh, that's up in the preacher. Oh, he's sending help. He's sending a rescue. Your enemy shall come in one way, but shall flee seven ways. It shall not come nigh my place.
and say, and pull the trigger, click, click, click. Now, if I ain't afraid to pull the trigger on my own gun, I'm definitely You're not, I can see your charger. Wow, right. I can see your charger. That's what it is. All right. Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, so after you don't just text on it. Wait, how much percent? Five percent if I could die. Oh, yeah. Stop it now. Okay. I think I can take 